have the pleasure of speaking with Frederick Kozak from Appia Energy. Oh, actually, it's Appia Rare Earths and Uranium. Is that correct? That is correct. Thank you, Tracy. Of course, you've had a name change since the last time I spoke to you. Can you tell us why you did a name change and what this means for shareholders? Well, it just a uh, yeah, great question. It was approved by shareholders earlier this year, but it just highlights the fact that uh, instead of just energy, we are rare earths and uranium, which are both related to the clean energy industry, and it is more representative of what our actual shareholders are owning in this company. And of course, all of the members of the Investor Intel audience following critical materials, you know, of course, about the uranium boom, and of course, all the rare earth inter interest. We have Appia, rare earth and uranium. And since you become president in the last, what, seven, eight months? Yeah, eight months, yeah. Well, since you have, I mean, we've just had an onslaught of news. I mean, you got a half a dozen news releases. We need you to do interviews with us more often, please, uh, Frederick. So let's just go through them. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. Um, I personally found the announcement on the new massive and semi-massive monazite zones at Wilson North and the, on the Alsace Lake drill program to be very interesting. Can you talk to us about that? Sure. Well, it is part of our, uh, our program this year where uh, Appia is drilling, oh boy, we'll drill almost 7,600 meters of drill core this year, which is more than has been drilled in all the previous years combined. But the, the finding at uh, Wilson North is a great piece of information because it's part of the general uh, WRCB area, Wilson, Richard, Charles and Bell zones, which make up the, the, core, uh, the, core, dis the core discovery at Alsace Lake thus far. What it does tell us is, um, and it's part of the, the program to delineate it. It tells us more about the geology. We have a really good understanding of it. We're getting a better understanding of it. But more importantly, it's moving us toward the uh, potential for a, a 43101 report uh, once we finish this year's drilling program. And for those of you out there going, monazite, rare earths, what do those two have in common? It's my understanding that your monazite uh, is some of the best sources for some of these rare earths. Is that correct? Yes, Tracy, and that's an excellent point. Thank you. Um, monazite has as much as twice the critical rare earth materials in it as do some of the other deposits, notably bascosite and uh, some of the monazite sand, or some of the, uh, not monazite sands, but some of the alluvial sands. So it is critically important that uh, in the world that's going towards a clean energy, uh, electric motors, electric vehicles, et cetera, that uh, this is a, a terrific resource for the, for the critical rare earths. But talking about the monazite as, it, as, a, as a mineral for the rare earths, it's, uh, it's not something that's new. Monazite processing has been around for more than 50 years. So it's not, we're not reinventing the wheel. And of course, out of respect to our dear friends in Japan that are doing uh, deep seawater, 2,000 meters underwater, they claim they can find rare earths. It's my understanding that monazite, your monazite uh, finding in particular at Alsace Lake is close to the surface. Is that correct? Yes. And uh, when we talk about massive and semi-massive monazite in, in the drilling, um, some of your viewers will note from our previous pre corporate presentations, we have pictures of massive monazite occurrences on the surface. I've stood on them at the Elsus Lake property and whereas you usually find monazite and very fine grains in, within the host rock, these are huge, massive, I hesitate to call them boulders, but occurrences, it, intrusions at surface, uh, what we found thus far at Elsus Lake, and there are reasons why people have called this one of the best potential rare earth projects in the world. What we found is a very high concentration of rare earths within the monazite, which could make future extraction a very economical process. And of course, 
we'd be remiss if we didn't bring up the fact that our editor-in-chief and a board of director member for Investor Intel, we do a lot of coverage of rare earths, as everybody knows, and critical materials, has joined your advisory board. Can you comment on having Jack Lifton join your advisory board, please? Well, Jack is, uh, he is a globally renowned expert in this field. In fact, he termed, or he invented the term technology metals. And we're just thrilled to be able to work with him. Jack has such a wealth of information. I believe that he has been at pretty much every rare earth project in the world. And I think it speaks volumes to our project that he would have, uh, that he consented to join our advisory board as well. So it's a, it's a great it's a great opportunity to work with one of the gentlemen who is foremost in his field, and uh, he obviously recognizes the value of the Elsus Lake project for Appia. Well, in addition, of course, to bringing on some of the best talent in the world, you know, yourself included, of course. Um, every time I turn around, it's a bot deal, private placement, upsizing. Uh, <laughs> I have to ask you, what's going on? They just seem to have a magnet for money over there at Appia, uh, Rare Earths and Uranium. Can you comment on this? Well, I think you, you hit the nail on the head by uh, saying Rare Earths and Uranium. There is great investor interest in the clean energy space. And the world is not going to get to net zero without uh, contribution from both of the materials that we're looking for. In terms of raising money, though, uh, you know, this year we are fully funded for our program. We will still have cash in the bank going into next year. Um, but, you know, the opportunity to raise money when, uh, when it's the right time to have cash on the balance sheet is, is a common tenant of the world of corporate finance. Uh, we don't know where the markets are going to be. We do have a lot of investor interest. Uh, this is the second bot deal that we have done this year, both of which have been upsized. And uh, we're spending our investors' money very wisely in terms of, as I said before, you know, our biggest ever drilling program on the rare earth side. And, uh, you know, on the uranium side, we, we announced previously that we're going to start an exploration, a geophysical exploration program that, as you as your viewers will know, uh, typically exploration geophysics leads to exploration drilling. So we're pretty excited about that potential uh, in, the, in the near future, but you'll have to watch for news on that. Well, Frederick, we can't thank you enough for joining us and providing us with an update on Appia, rare earths and uranium. Thank you so much for joining us and we look forward to you hosting an investor talk here shortly. Thank you. Thank you again, Tracy.